everywhere we go in our da daily life, regulations are piled up against us. Not just us, but it feels like us in our industry. The government is against us. All of the the do-gooder help groups in the world are against us, right? It's legislation. We are against ourselves as a people. And maybe that's how some of these people need to start thinking about it. Instead of thinking, I'm a black YouTuber and I'm doing this and doing that. And other people over here going, well, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. The majority of whites have kept their mouth shut because they don't want to get involved in anything that's going to label them. And believe me, you get labeled everything just for non-essential things. We should be truck drivers and stand together in this problem. I, this is a call to action. I call for everyone Please spread this out there. Spread it to the mega carriers because they're going to be the problem in this. Stop taking loads to DCs that service the cities that are causing these problems. Louisville, Kentucky, Chicago, Madison, Wisconsin, Portland, Maine, wherever these places are at, St. Louis, stop taking loads there. Just stop. When they run out of food and water, and I would never call for this in any regular market, but when these people don't have food and water, these people is everybody but us, okay? Then I bet you they go home and they stop harassing the truck driver because a month ago you was a hero. This week, you're somebody to be robbed and victimized if you let yourself be victimized. When this started, I thought maybe, who knows, right? But you've seen with that driver in, um, in, that, that, in St. St. Louis that ran over that man that tried to get under in his truck he was a black guy, okay? Just another truck driver, all right? He's already been hit with a civil suit. That also means that, that his company has been hit with a civil suit when they didn't do anything. He was protecting his life. There should be some kind of national res respiratory concealed carry thing to protect everyone. But if they're not in the truck, you can't shoot them. But you can run from them. Now, there are laws that cover the impeding of commerce on the highway. These are felonies. There are many more laws about civil unrest. This is definitely, to me, it feels like an issue of our civil rights. Screw their civil rights. We're just trying to feed our family. They're just trying to steal something. Now, you may not get charged but on a, for a criminal, a, a felony crime, like hurting someone but you can still be hit with these civil suits that you may lose. And if you lose them, it's, it's, it's gonna be devastating to you and your family. This article, and I will link it below, is from uh, Transportation Nation. It's trucking law experts answers if truckers have the right to stand your ground if attacked. Now, this is something different than your regular castle doctrine, okay? As report, Reports continue to emerge this week of riders targeting big rigs amid, amid the social unrest and outrage, blah, blah, blah. One trucker's recent viral social media post urging drivers to use deadly force if required to protect yourself is sparking debate about the legal rights to stand your ground. It's important for truckers to understand the law and your rights if, God forbid, you find yourself in a dangerous situation. I'd rather be judged by... Tw by tw Really big, or whatever. Uh, yeah. For answers, we turn to Joe Alphabet of the Gallagher Sharp Law Firm in Cleveland. Alphabet has been practicing law and transportation for 40 years. He spends most of his time representing truckers, trucking companies in complex multi million dollar accident cases. Alphabet says that if a trucker is faced with imminent harm or reasonable fear of violence, he is with his rights to protect himself. When, it's, when they're beating on your door, they're going to get that door open. You're in imminent danger. If you use force that is intended or likely to cause great bodily harm to another, and if that person is in the process of unlawfully entering your truck, then there is a presumption that you are allowed to use that force. Specifically, he pointed to the stand your ground laws also sometimes referred to as castle doctrine. These laws are across, they're across different states, allowing people to defend themselves when threatened, especially while in their homes. But the latitude given varies from state to state. Some states, you have to retreat if you have a back door. Now, if you're, if you're surrounded in a truck, you have no back door. 
Even in the states that don't have specific stand your ground laws, alphabets, as the prosecutor would have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the truck, trucker acted with criminal intent, which he said is a high standard to meet. However, the standard of proof is much lower in a civil case. In these instances, alphabet says reasonable care standard is applied. Think about what the average person being called for jury duty would think about this, he urged. There is going to be more than one version of the protesters are going to say something different than the trucker. What about the argument that the trucker used excessive force when it was the cargo the loaders wanted? I don't think we care so much about the cargo, but we do care about our safety. The law would make a distinction between purely protecting property and protecting a person. Don't shoot them if they're trying to get your property, guys. You're not going to be safe there. But no one could know that they were only interested in packages, so it would be reasonable to assume that I myself is in danger of having to get out, out of here. Now this part is about the guy in St. Louis that ran over the protester slash rioter. There's very little difference between these groups, if, in my opinion. From four to, to dark, they're a protester, and then after dark, they turn to rioting. According to the video evidence and authorities, a 29-year-old Barry Perkins III of Glasgow Village, along with a group of rioters, attacked a FedEx rig in the early morning hours last Saturday. Perkins became stuck on the converter dolly, on the dolly between the dual trailers. As the truck pulled away, authorities say Perkins was caught by one of the tires and pulled under the rig. He was drag, dragged for five blocks. Perkins later died in the hospital. Good. The Witherspoon Law Group was hired to represent the Perkins family. In a statement through WLG, the family claims Perkins was peacefully protesting the death of George Floyd and was not looting Saturday when he was dragged by the FedEx truck, placing the blame on the driver. There is no justification for running over a human being with a semi-truck. Should a civil suit be filed by Perkins' family? Alphabet says the law in this case protects the trucker and FedEx through what's known as expressed assumption of risk. No one is allowed to assume that a risk and then you're not allowed to go into it to do something that dangers someone else and then sue them when something bad happens to you. If you're in the if you're robbing my house and I blow your arm off, you might try to sue, but you're not going to get anything cuz I'm protecting myself. Authorities have yet to reveal the identity of the trucker or indicate if he will face criminal charges. Some on social media have accused truckers who have shared their viral post or personally expressed similar sentiment uh, promoting the very behavior they are condemning. In fact, some are calling for those who are urging truckers to use lethal force if necessary to be prosecuted for inciting violence or even a hate crime speech. Speech is now okay. Could someone be in charge with such an offense? Alphabet says he sees no, no legal jeopardy there. You can't prosecute someone for their thoughts. It might be a little strident, but I don't think it would be prosecutable to just say that on Facebook it doesn't rise to the level of unprotected speech. I'm gonna follow this video up with a few more, but I want you to understand, in my opinion, don't deliver to these states. If the governors and the mayors in these cities and states are going to run rampant, let, let the rule of law just be thrown to the, to the window. But they're going to enforce those rule of law on other citizens. Then this is an act of racial prejudice or, or group prejudice or something that I feel like is endangering us all. These are just my opinions things that are on my mind, and I'm sharing them with you.